everybody, Amir Chang here, The Take by Cinepass. So as probably a dozen of you know, Cinepass is most likely dead at this stage. Uh, I, I believe uh, a dozen of you have looked at my um, you know, previous app, um, you know, a work in progress, but you know, safe to say this stage, it's dead. You know, it may be resurrected in the future. But one of the things that I, I actually wanted to do from early on is provide a uh, perspective on movie reviews. So this is it, The Take by Cinepass. Um, so, first movie that I'm gonna review, Tenet. Incredible, incredible movie. I don't care what any other reviewer says. Uh, all of them can, you know, suck a fart. Uh, Y'all <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Um, I had The Guardian review it, uh, sorry, I saw The Guardian review, um, you know, saying that it didn't have any soul, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of heart. I thought the movie had too much heart, in my opinion, um, you know, probably, you know, tone it down a little bit. I'll, I'll give you my perspective on it. That movie was incredible. It was the best of Memento, it was the best of uh, Inception, and it was the best of Interstellar. Uh, fantastic visual effects, way better visual effects than I anticipated. From an editor perspective, that's a tough, tough movie to edit. Memento, uh, to me, was probably one of the hardest movie uh, to kind of keep track of. Um, so this one kind of, you know, threw everybody kind of a little bit of a curve. Um, the editor of choice for Christopher Nolan is Jennifer Lamb. So Jennifer Lamb recently edited um, Hereditary. Uh, so an interesting choice for, for Christopher Nolan to choose her uh, as he's only worked with three different editors. Um, you know, the first editor from uh, Memento, uh, Lee Smith. Lee Smith uh, has cut all his movies um, from Memento on, uh, sorry, not from Memento onwards. Uh, it was actually from, uh, it was the, it was the Norwegian movie um, with uh, Al Pacino and uh, Robin Williams. Um, and so this is the first time Lee Smith did not edit a uh, Christopher Nolan movie, uh, which, you know, we'll, we'll kind of bring up uh, a, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a kind of backstory here. Um, interesting, interesting uh, editing choice. Uh, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. Okay, from an editor perspective, this movie would take at least eighteen months to two years to edit. It's an impossible task, uh, impossible task for any normal human being. I'll tell you that. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite sure Jennifer Lamb, uh, Jennifer Lame, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, yeah, Jennifer Lame, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just say that. Um, I'm quite confident she has uh, two assistants that, that, that's helping her out. Um, yeah, there's oh, <laughs> time moving forward, time moving backwards, and uh, yeah, <laughs> just even the visual effects, if you look at, you know, once, once you see in person, uh, you'll, you'll realize how complicated and how tough it is to even uh, track it uh, and even you know just like with tone mapping even with um, uh, uh, even with like you know like coloring out a lot, a lot of different things right so speaking of colors the uh, uh, the cinematographer for this is uh, Hoyt Haitima. Uh, Hoyt uh, shot one of my favorite movies of all time her uh, I'm indifferent with Interstellar and I'm indifferent with Dunkirk. I'm not a big fan of Dunkirk. A lot of people know I, I, I'm not a big war movie. I, I refuse to watch 1917. Even Dunkirk was a, uh, you know, uh, Dunkirk was one of those uh, Warner Brothers movie that, you know, Christopher Nolan had to shoot in order to get, you know, Tenet, right? So same thing, you know, same thing with a lot of directors. They, they have to shoot certain pieces in order to get certain things right at the end. Um, yeah, like uh, without ruining without ruining much, I'll uh, I'll, I'll tell you kind of uh, my my perspective on the, the movie, right? So my little my, my, my take on it. First introduction, way better introduction than the Dark Knight. Incredible, and I love the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight's intro, one of the best intros last decade. This uh, this intro, one of the best intros of this decade. Um, yeah, just even with the colors, even with the you know choreography, the fighting. Um, this is probably one of the best North American fighting type of movies I've seen in a while. You know, it's very realistic. It's not over the top. It's not you know <laughs> Rambo just drop kicking everybody. It's it's, it's a very realistic take. Uh, it's a similar uh, realistic take to the uh, Daredevil uh, TV series. 
uh, one of the you know one of the best fighting uh, sequences uh, in a, in any media format. Uh, in terms of story structure wise, uh, it makes sense. It really does, and uh, I don't care what anybody says. And um, yeah, like nothing nothing about it is a uh, um, nothing about it kind of throw off anybody. Um, it, you know, obviously this movie is not a simple simple movie, and uh, uh, it, it's really meant for a lot of film students. Um, and it's and, and here's my take on this. It's probably gonna a very gonna be a very weird weird take. This movie is an audition piece for James Bond. You know, obviously it's a spy movie. It's a it's not a sci-fi like Inception. It's not a sci-fi like uh, Interstellar. It's a spy movie. Like it's very clear. It's a spy movie, right? So Christopher Nolan has shown his uh, it's lots of homage by the way to uh, a lot of James Bond. Um, films um, and Christopher Nolan has never shied away from saying that he wants to do a James Bond movie but he's you know he, he just can't come up with an original idea for it this to me feels like a uh, an audition for the uh, a James Bond film in the future I doubt I don't think I don't think uh, Christopher Nolan will ever sorry I wouldn't say ever uh, will shoot a James Bond film in the next couple of years uh, but this is this definitely brings up the conversation. Uh, he may shoot it as his very last movie. Um, yeah, in terms of structure-wise, it, it was very James Bondy type of you know structure, right? Obviously with a Christopher Nolan twist. It. Um, yeah, and you know, look looking from um, this decade has been very very interesting in terms of choices for Christopher Nolan. So no longer does he have Hans Zimmer scoring the movie. He has uh, Ludwig, which scored uh, Black Panther recently. Fantastic uh, uh, Sunday movie. Uh, so he scored this movie as well. Um, great, great choice. Lots of uh, uh, structured beats that are just mind-blowing for me to even uh, feel and experience. Um, of course, the uh, cinematographer of choice this time is uh, 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 three times shooting Christopher Nolan movie Hoyt, uh, uh, Hoyt Team, I believe, Haitima. Um, obviously, before last decade was with uh, Wally Pfister from Memento onwards, um, and I think they ended their relationship uh, in the uh, Dark Knight Rises. So, um, obviously, you know Wally has been kind of on a uh, steady decline now. Um, once again, you know, even the conversation with editor. This is the first time uh, Lee Smith is not editing his movies. Lee Smith is actually editing. Dune, and um, and guess who the uh, uh, score is? Uh, for, uh, sorry, sorry, who? Guess who's the music uh, producer is for Dune? On Zimmer. So it's like uh, they just did a, a full flip there. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it, it's been it's been an interesting year, story structure wise. I think Nolan just throwing every <laughs> every little piece out there. Very original story. Very, you know, fantastic uh, storyline. Um, definitely, definitely requires two to three viewings, and I can see why a lot of, um, you know, a lot of normal reviewers, you know, realistically, I'm a film god. Um, I'm a film student, you know, uh, through and through. Nothing could ever, you know, really phase me in terms of these things. So I can see a lot of normal review uh, reviewers not understanding how this movie is structured and how the movie progresses and why it's made and why it's you know built that way right um yeah it, it it's a great movie uh, and definitely definitely shot as a summer tentpole movie and i can see why you know nolan's picky with his choices you know no drive uh, no um drive-in theaters because the speakers are you know bluetooth or whatever they use now the small speakers they have uh definitely Beautifully shot in IMAX, beautifully shot, beautifully color corrected. Uh, very interesting choice from Hoyt though. Uh, it It's shot like her in terms of color spectrum wise. Um, a lot of the RGB um, color spectrum is very, very interesting. It, it, it doesn't have the same um, LA warm feel to uh, her, uh, but it does, it, you know, it, it, it very feels like a modern, modern, modern movie. And, um, and and the, the way I say this is um, the the color processing that they've chosen it looks like they're stacking uh, three very dominant 
color choices. There's a shot, and I don't want to ruin the movie, there's a shot on the third act of the movie that establishes the, uh, uh, the, uh, the scene, and uh, just the way the fog is, you know, lit up, just the way, you know, things are, are uh, shot and stuff, and uh, it feels very warm, and, and, um, and a lot of Christopher Nolan movies have not been warm. Um, you know, Dunkirk was like <laughs> the coldest blue you can think of, uh, even Interstellar, for a warm movie shot in Alberta, uh, it, was like, it was shot like an hour away from Edmonton, and uh, it was not a warm type of movie. It was, colors were muted, uh, even the cornfield, uh, the greens were um, off by two color, two color spectrums. Um, yeah, this movie is very, very confusing, but fantastic choices, uh, in, in my opinion, right? So, um, yeah, and editing wise, like like I said, good luck. Like, <laughs> I look at I look at all the cuts, and I'm just like, holy! <laughs> I, like I can tell, I can tell <laughs> which was uh, which was cut by Jennifer, which was cut by um, the assistants and stuff, right? Assistant editor, and obviously Nolan and Jennifer would look at it and uh, approve, you know, the, the, the cuts and stuff, right? But I was able to pick up and I'm just like, ah, okay, this is a, you know, a, a bunch of uh, interesting uh, uh, cuts, a bunch of interesting choices. Um, yeah, um, you know, huge re recommendation, uh, definitely an 8.5, you know, maybe towards nine uh, after multiple viewing. Uh, do I think it's the movie of the year yet? Um, I'll wait, I'll wait for the next four months. Uh, so far, uh, I, th I think there might be, you know, one or two that can kind of slip in, uh, but it, it's definitely top five, top three for sure, like top three for sure. Uh, lots of great movies came out this year, uh, some on VOD, some on uh, straight to theaters. Um, I'm still waiting for um, uh, Kerry Fukunaga's uh, um, James Bond film. I'm still waiting for Dune. Zaki, I promise you, we'll go together. Uh, you know, we're going to watch it together. You, me, Temu, uh, maybe Sabora. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, I, I still, I still hold, I still hold my, I still hold my, my belief that uh, this is an audition piece for James Bond. Um, Kerry Fukunaga did the uh, True Detective with this uh, seven-minute uh, no-cut shot, and he did the um, the Netflix uh, series as well. That was an audition piece for the uh, James Bond uh, 25th anniversary. He's the first American, by the way, to. Uh, uh, to direct a James Bond film, so props to him, a former NYU grad, um, and yeah, um, you know, back to back to for back to talent, talent of course. Um, yeah, great movie, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and watch it. Thank you.